Hi and welcome back to a new video. I'm not sure if you might remember this video from Computex. From my perspective, what's the most exciting is this CPU cooling block. Because if you try to pay attention, you will notice that you cannot see any kind of tubing. This very special block was designed by Ban from Modding Cafe. And even though I already saw systems from him in the past on news websites, I didn't know that it's the same guy who also made this very special water block that has no fittings on the front side, which I think is just very innovative design, something I have not seen before. Even though some people maybe thought about the idea of doing something like this, I think he's the first who ever made something like that. And then it was just another coincidence that a friend of him who is also German and he knows me and Ban is from Vietnam and the friend of Ban, who also works in Vietnam, was in Germany last week. And he brought this as a gift for me from Ban from Modding Cafe. And this is one of those very special coolers. And we have the honor in today's video to be the first to look at this in more detail and also to try to mount it and to use it. This is going to be extremely exciting. This video is powered by Hetzner and the Hetzner Server Auction. If you need an affordable and at the same time swiftly available server, this is the right place for you to check. Using the filters on the left, you can easily select the server according to your needs. For example, with location in Falkenstein, Germany, AMD CPU and for example minimum 32GB of memory. This example shows a Ryzen 7 1700X server for only 35 euro per month and there is no setup fee. The traffic as usual is unlimited and the server auction once again shows Hetzner's focus on a responsible business with focus on resources to use the hardware as long as possible. Find out more in the link below. Okay, for whatever reason there is a bits power block in here. This is... Wait a second. Wait a second. He even added my logo in the back. I thought this is just one of his prototypes. But I think he just made it for us. That's even more exciting. That's, that is actually amazing. And look at the size of this water block. The amount of acrylic they used for this. We already guessed in the previous video from Computex that there has to be some kind of backplate behind the mainboard to distribute the water to the block in front. That's amazing. <laughs> I just cannot... I just cannot get behind the adding my logo in there. That's, yeah, that is just way too cool. I think I now also get why the bits power block was included. That's because if you pay attention to the water block inside, the actual copper piece with the structure inside, it's just a repurposed bits power block, at least the, the bottom part of it, which, I mean, it's, it's a modding project, right? So that's totally fine. Should still cool pretty well. Top part is an aluminium frame with some magnets inside to hold it down. I think I will just contact him on Discord first because he pointed out, or his friend pointed out that Ban might have a little bit more instructions and stuff. So I will get in touch with him and then, well, for you it will be back in seconds. It was a good idea to talk to Ban quickly because he also prepared a full manual for us. I think I could have guessed without the manual because you can kind of see where the mainboard goes and it's also pre-assembled. Still, there are some more, I think, O-rings and screws included. That will definitely make it easier for me. And it was also very exciting to talk to him. He seems to be very innovative. He did a lot of very interesting projects over the previous years. But I think for now, we will, or I will just disassemble it first and then we will build it together on a recent B650 board. Since this cooler gets its water through the board, through those mounting holes, obviously the cooler cannot be mounted through those. Which means that first we have to remove the AMD SAM. I will remove the, well, I will not remove the CPU. I will keep it in the socket to protect the socket so I don't damage any pins, but first then remove the SAM. First of all, we have to put this thick acrylic plate behind the board. And that's also where we get the water from. We can decide to either go from top or bottom or theoretically also use some of these connectors from the side. Makita, could you please shut up? Thank you. With those long fittings attached, and those will be the ones 
that will point through the mainboard PCB and distribute the water. That's how we'll have to mount it from the back side. But first, the AMD backplate also has to go on here. And I have to fix it with two screws. Just noticed that I had it upside down in my hands because obviously the insulating layer, the white one has to be facing upwards towards the backside of the board. I will now put the backplate underneath the board. Carefully place it above. That was pretty smooth. So we see the tubing now goes through the holes. And here we have something that you could kind of call like a contact frame. So it's replacing the AMD SAM. And in addition, it has four threads in the side for mounting or for the ability to mount the next layer on top. Before I proceed mounting the rest of the cooler, I just want to double check that the mounting pressure is sufficient. I had to improvise a bit because I had to use my own four screws for mounting this kind of CPU socket plate, whatever. And we will now... I'm not sure why this board is doing this. Like if I flip the power switch on the PSU, it immediately turns on. You saw I did not touch the power button. But yeah, it's getting warm. It will be stuck at a certain time at 15 for memory detection, which is normal. But so far it looks quite okay, so I will just proceed. On top goes this acrylic part that also contains the bits power block. Well, the cold plate of the block. I'm not sure what bits power did here exactly. And I also double checked with Bun. I mean, can you see the surface? What the hell is this? Like, I mean, some kind of milling marks, whatever, are always fine because you will not be able to tell a difference, but that's, this is extremely rough. I don't get it. The performance itself is not going to be in focus anyway today. I guess it's not going to matter. I also noticed that the M2 cooling block from this board was in the way. That's mainly because this is a custom project that was also not made for this board. And I mean, that's totally fine. Now the entire thing has to be sealed off. That's something I wondered about when I was checking the Computex build. I couldn't really understand how it's sealed off. But now we will place some O-rings around here and this will seal off the acrylic piece to those tubes. Last step is to attach this distro plate that also contains some what of a visual flow meter that's also sealed off in itself. And I also have to place the LED strip on top but then we should be ready to go. Overall, now that it's mounted, it's still, it's, I mean, it's living up to its name, stealth tubing. And I think it's extremely elegant to look at the block this way and to know that there will be no tubing going from the block. It will just be covered in the backside. I think it's, it's very impressive, but I think there needs to be some, yeah, optimization changes to this backplate thing. If we would maybe turn this into a mass product, then I have some plans how we could make this a bit simpler and uh, maybe also quite a bit thinner, because right now it would limit the amount of cases that are compatible with this, I guess, drastically. Could be that you would have to make additional cutouts in the mainboard tray to make sure that this entire piece fits through. I didn't check any cases, I have to make that clear, but I think there's a good possibility that you run into some compatibility issues with this because it has to stick through the mainboard tray. But generally speaking, I would want to hear your feedback, your thoughts on this design because I talked to Ben about this and we were getting there that we could maybe turn this into a mass product from Thermal Grizzly's side and make something that's pretty similar from the concept, make some optimizations here and there for better or easier mounting, uh, the different cold plate obviously, and also maybe change the, the back plate a little bit, but just let me know your thoughts about this concept overall. Now that it passed DRAM training, also the LED strip turned on, which makes it look even better. So I think just design-wise, this is a true masterpiece. Even though, generally speaking, the performance and temperatures are not in focus for today because there's definitely stuff you, we can easily improve. Just a quick R23, you can see this 7950X consuming about 225 watt 
like straight hits to about 93 degrees Celsius. Again, the performance itself will mainly depend on the cold plate and the cold plate design. This was using an adapted bits power block, which for whatever reason had a terrible quality. So that's definitely going to negatively impact the performance. That's something we could easily fix. I just want to know from your side what you think about this design, like in general, this concept, if that's something that should make it maybe to the mass market. Thanks again to Modding Cafe for providing this to us because it's, an, <laughs> it's a just very unique piece of engineering, very well thought through very well done with those small tubes going through the mainboard PCB and that's also something I have no information about right now because this small tubing could theoretically also impact the flow rate of your system but since it's using two for each side could also not have an impact that's something I don't know about right now yeah let me know feedback thanks again to Modding Cafe enjoy the rest of your Sunday see you soon